So the next one I want to do is the refraction tab. I try to color code my template button somewhat. Blue buttons pull in data from the Marco refraction system. I have a lens meter, AR, AK, and an electronic ferropter that it can all import data into Crystal. Over here I've got the distance PD that pulls forward the previous PD, the binocular and monocular. I've got the objective RX and it's not going to bring anything over because it's not hooked up but when I click that button it brings the data into the AR fields and it puts a date and it indicates that it's AR. So it just tells me that it's an autorefractor reading versus retinoscopy. I use a previous button if I want to know what the last values were and that will fill in the date that that last reading was from and it was apparently for retinoscopy. Same thing goes for the AK. I hit this button, it puts in the current date. If I hit previous, it puts in the date of the previous reading and brings forward the data from there. So I have a cyclo button here. It pulls in the AR data, but I bring it into these fields so that I know that it was done under cycloplegia. And again, I can hit previous, it puts the date, and it tells me that this previous reading was, was retinoscopy. If I do the regular cyclo, it puts in the current date and lists it as AR. For habitual Rx, I have places for two habitual prescriptions. If they have three or four or more pairs of glasses, I just put that information in the notes. I didn't want to waste a bunch of fields when most patients don't have you know, more than two active pairs of glasses. This button pulls forward the lens meter data, which is going to be blank, so it's not going to tell you anything. Uh, I enter here, like if it's single vision, progressive, maybe the brand of progressive, and here I put the year um, versus the age as much as possible so that when I pull the data forward in the future, I can tell when that's from. This pulls over their previous RX, and it, I use that if they don't have their glasses with them, or sometimes I just pull it over because I want to see what the last prescription is. It's easier to see it here than it is looking at the other older tabs and previous habitual brings forward the data that was in these fields at the last exam. So if they come in and they say I'm wearing the same glasses that I had last time from four years ago, I use previous habitual and it pulls that information forward. I like this to be used for their general purpose pair and if they have special near vision only or computer glasses I prefer that to be in habitual too. So if it gets switched around I can hit this button and that puts that data into Habitual 2 and then they can redo the, the correct one here. These clear buttons clear out the information for either one of the prescriptions. I've also got the Habitual Contact Lens information on this page. So on this page I can do the preliminaries. We can check their vision and check contact lenses, make notes of the fit and the rotation over refraction if I want to. And this over refraction button pulls the AR reading into these fields as an over refraction and I put AR there so that I know that that's a AR over refraction versus a manual you know ferropter over refraction. These are all else normal buttons. All of my all else normal buttons only fill in the default value if the field is empty. So I typically go through and enter anything that's unusual and then for a new patient I hit new patient all else normal. It assumes that the pupils, the versions, the confrontation fields, phorias, color vision, and depth perception are normal and it enters the current date in there. I can append the pupil size to the pupil information and I can click blue, brown, or hazel to put the iris color in the exam field. This button pulls forward the subjective Rx from the RT5100 I prefer to just import the subjective Rx and then I can make any modifications that I want in the final Rx down here. This button pulls all the data. It pulls the lens meter data, the AK data, and the AR data, and the subjective refraction. This button sets the subjective refraction to the habitual Rx. And Rx history opens up the Rx history window. Frames opens up the frame order window. A lot of times I'll use that to see what's the latest prescription that the patient's wearing. VA within normal limits fills in the distance VA 2020 and each eye in 2015 binocular and 2020 near VA and these fields copy down to the final Rx but I can always overwrite them if for some reason I want to.
Okay. Same thing, the subjective Rx copies down to the final Rx. And I'm going to clear this. I don't have a clear button for this. Okay, so I'm going to push some buttons to fill in some data here. I'm going to fill that in with the previous habitual 2. And then, since I don't have this hooked up, I'm going to make the subjective equal to the habitual 1. So it copies this data into the habitual. And the subjective fields copy down to the final fields. But I can always modify these if I want to. So we'll make this a minus 150. Then I'm going to put over here a plus 75 for a special computer prescription. All right, and this can also be this final. I can make it equal to the habitual one. So this final, you know, sometimes unfortunately you do you do the whole subjective refraction. The patient prefers their original habitual. So I keep this in here, but I can make this habitual one, or I can make it habitual two, and I can make this one habitual two. All right, but I want to clear that because I want to make some special prescriptions. So actually I need this add in here. Okay, so I've got this is their basic prescription and say they want to have a near vision only prescription. If I click this button, it adds the add total to the sphere and creates a single vision reading only prescription. Okay. If I click the single vision VDT, it adds the VDT add from this field to the spherical power to come up with a single vision computer glass. If I click BV VDT, it adds the VDT power to the sphere to make the top portion of the bifocal, and then it makes the difference in the add for the add power. And it writes over here bifocal VDT in the notes. Let me put a PD in here. And the PD fields, the right eye copies down to the left. So if I put 68 here, if I do 34, it copies down to the left eye. If I want to change that, the, the cursor is still there so I can change it to 35 or whatever I want. Okay, so let's just copy these notes. I'm going to put recommend office for near and PAL. And when I finalize it, it's going to check the finalized box. It opens up the window so I can confirm that the, the prescription is in there. Puts the, the notes that are in here in the note field. I can change them if I want or delete it. Okay. Then it copies the notes and the type and puts it in this plan. And this it, it looks kind of funny because it's almost the same as what's up here. But this plan is also in the plan field on the A&P tab. So I want to see what's on that A&P tab under the plan. So I keep it here. If I finalize prescription 2, it checks the box again, opens up prescription 2. I can rename it if I want. Puts bifocal VDT in the notes. And I close that. It appends spectacle RX2 bifocal VDT to the plan. Okay. If I clear, it clears out this. It unchecks the box. It also clears out the RX1 from the RX tab. You see that's empty, but RX2 is still there. Okay. If I clear this, it does the same thing. Empties that, clears out RX2 from the RX tab. Okay, so I cleared these fields out to show you what it does for a former patient. Again, I can put in what I want here, and then if I want, I can bring forward former patient all else normal. It brings forward the color vision and stereo with the date of whenever it was last done and puts the default values for anything that's blank. If I had something in there, it leaves whatever it was. And actually, if you have a former patient, these are typically filled out from the medical history button and the ocular history button brings forward the color and the stereo values and the PD from before. So that should cover the RX tab. Next up is the contact lens tab. If this is a new patient, I fill out the contact lens history portion here. The solution field is linked to the final RX solution, so I have to overwrite that if I want to change it. Then I enter their habitual RX or their first trials here. The cursor goes through the power fields first, then the brand based curve and diameter of the right eye. So when I get to the equal button, I just hit enter and it copies that to the left eye. If they're the same, then I'm done. If not, I just overwrite the left eye. I also set up buttons that enter the brand based curve and diameter for common lenses into these temporary fields. When I click on the button, 
If the right eye fields are empty, it goes in there. If not, it goes to the left eye. Then I use the T1, T2, T3, or Rx buttons to send it to the corresponding Rx fields. These buttons overwrite anything that's in there, but I'll hit the Clear Material button to clear the brand base curve and diameter and use these buttons to enter that back in. Then if I click the Clear Rx button, it clears everything. If it's a former patient, I usually click the contact lens history button. That gets the solution and the replacement from the last Rx. It puts the previous dominance, aperture, HVID values into the history fields. And it runs the habitual T1 button that pulls forward the previous contact lens Rx into the habitual fields. Then I put comments about the fit in the notes. And I can use the OR button if I want to pull in AR data for the over refraction. The exam fields and the AR, AK fields are the exact same fields as on the refraction and exam tabs, and the buttons work the same way. But the subjective RX fields are not the same as on the refraction tab, because I wanted to be able to pull forward a previous subjective with the date into these fields at future contact lens visits. When I finalize the spectacle RX, it puts the subjective RX here, not the final RX, because sometimes the final RX is modified, and I wanted to know what I actually got in the ferropter. These buttons let me copy T1 to final or T2, T2 to final or T3, and T3 to final. I still haven't figured out what I want to include for the good fit, so those buttons don't do anything. Let me put some notes in here before I finalize the RX. Now the final contact lens RX button opens the RX window so I can confirm that the RX is what I want. I can delete or change the notes, and I can order trials or contacts. It also runs several buttons behind the scenes that set the manufacturer and replacement based on the brand and the type based on the RX for the right eye. It sets wear to daily wear, and if the solution is blank, it sets it to BioTrue for daily disposables and PeroxiClear for everything else. It copies the mono, wear, type, replacement, solution, and notes into the plan, and it checks the finalized button so I know it's been transferred to the RX tab. It looks a little strange to have the notes and plans so similar when they're right next to each other, but I also have the contact lens plan on the A&P tab, so I want to be able to see what's going into that field. If I want to change the wear, replacement, solution, or mono fields after I've finalized, I can use the Update Plan button, and that'll update the information in the plan without displaying the RX window. Since we have to finalize the RX to have it available for trials, I can check the Fit Done box on the contact lens fit so that I know this is the final RX. The final to T2 button comes in handy when I try a new lens on a patient and they call back and say they prefer the original. I go and edit the record and copy the final to T2. Then I add a dated update in the notes that says the patients preferred the original lenses. Then I update the RX and finalize it. The clear material and clear RX buttons in the final RX work a little differently. The clear material button clears everything from the brand to the right, and the clear RX button clears everything. I also clear the contact lens RX from the RX tab and uncheck the finalize and fit done buttons since the change to the finalized RX would mean that the info in the RX tab would be wrong. Okay, the contact lens order button opens up the contact lens order window. The RX history button opens up the RX history window. The contact lens info button opens up the OD specs website with contact lens parameters. And the GPLI button opens up the GPLI website. We can search for gas permeable lenses. And I think that's it for the contact lens tab.